College Algebra, Module 10, Topic 10.2, Properties of Logarithms. Recall that the logarithm with base A of a positive number X, denoted by the log of X base A is equal to K, is defined as the log of X base A equals K if and only if X is equal to A to the K power. Simply put, the log is the power to which you raise the base. For these examples, we want to use a calculator to approximate the pair of expression, the log of 2 plus the log of 5. So we're going to do the log of 2, which is equal to 0 .3010 plus the log of 5, well the log of 5 is 0.69897, so when we add those up we get 0.3010 plus 0.69897, which would give us 0.9997, which is equal to basically 1. Now we could have just done it one step on our calculator, the log of 2, close the parenthesis, plus the log of 5, close the parenthesis, which would give us 1. Now the second expression we want to simplify is just the log of 10. Well remember the log means the power to which you're raising the base of 10, so the log of 10 is obviously 1. So what that says is the log of 2 plus the log of 5 is the same thing as the log of 10. Let's do it again. Use a calculator to approximate the following pair of expressions. The log of 4 to the 5th power and then also 5 times the log of 4. Well the first one, the log of 4 to the 5th, so we're going to say the log of 4 to the power of 5, still in parentheses, so we're going to close that and we would get 3.0103. And then the second one is 5 times the log of 4, so we're going to do 5 times the log of 4. And notice we get exactly the same thing, 3.0103. Well, objective one talks about properties of the logarithm, and these are properties that we just showed you on the calculator. For any positive numbers, m, n, and a not equal to one, and any real number r, the log of one base a is equal to zero, and the log of a base a is equal to one. Well, the log of 1 base A equals 0, that just means the base is A, the log is the power, while A to the 0 power is 1. And then the second one, the log of A base A, that means A to what power would give us A? Well, that's 1, so the log base A of A is equal to 1. Those are just properties that we're going to use over and over. Now the second property, the log of m base a plus the log of n base a is equal to the log of m times n base a. And what that says is the sum of two logs is equal to the log of the product. This was the one we did earlier and we said the log of 2 plus the log of 5. Well this property says then we can just go 2 times 5 is 10, which we showed that both of those were equal to 1. Now I did not show you the third one, but what it says is the log of m base a minus the log of n base a is equal to the log of m divided by n base a. So to subtract two logs, you divide what you're taking the log of and notice that the base stays A in all three pieces. And then the fourth property says the log of M to the R base A is equal to R times the log of M base A. 
So in this one, notice that the power basically just went out front and you multiplied by R. That was the one we did a second ago. Let's do some examples of these. Express each log as the sum or difference of logarithms. Well, because we're doing the log of a product, that means we can add the log. So that would be the log of 2 base 2 plus the log of x base 2. Now remember, the ln or the natural log is the same as the log with base e, so all these properties still hold. So because we have the log of a fraction, that means we can subtract the log, so that means it's the natural log of 7 minus the natural log of k squared. Now, if we wanted to apply one more step to this, the natural log of k squared, remember the power comes out front, so that is actually going to be the natural log of 7 minus 2 times the natural log of k. This time we're going to expand each expression and write your answers without exponents. So first thing we notice is we've got the log of a product, which means we're going to add those. So it would be the log of 5, base 2, plus the log of x to the fourth, base 2. Well, just like we did earlier, an exponent of 4 comes out front and multiplies, so we get the log of 5, base 2, plus 4 times the log of x, base 2. And then the last one, doing a natural log, again, now this time we've got in the numerator, we've got a product, which means we're going to add. And then because we've got a fraction, that means we're going to subtract. So we've got the natural log of 7 plus the natural log of x to the third minus the natural log of k squared. Now if we go in and deal with the exponents, we get the natural log of 7, the natural log of x to the third, the 3 comes out front, so we get 3 times the natural log of x. And then on the last one, k squared, the 2 comes out front, so we get 2 times the natural log of k. So this is just a way we can rewrite logarithms so that we're going to be able to simplify them a little bit easier. Now the next example Use the properties of logs to write the expression in terms of logs x, y, and z. Same thing, we've got a fraction, which means it's division, which means we're going to subtract the log. So we've got the log of x to the sixth minus the log of y squared z. So now we've got the log of x to the sixth minus now here we've got the log of a product, which means we're going to add those. So it's the log of y squared plus the log of z. So when we distribute that minus sign, and I'm going to go ahead and take my exponents and bring them out front. So this first term becomes 6 times the log of x. Now the log of y squared, the 2's coming out front, so we get 2 times the log of y. And I'm going to bring my minus over because that, dis that minus distributes to both pieces the log of z. So that would be our answer. Now let's go the other way. They're giving us three logs and we want to rewrite as a single log. Well. The plus means we're going to multiply, so that's the log of 5 times 15. Now minus log of 3 means we're going to divide by 3. So we would get the log of 75 over 3, which would be the log of 25. And that would be our simplified log. Then the second example the log of 7 plus the log of 13, because we're adding logs, that means we're going to find the product. So that means the natural log of 7 times 13, which would give us the natural log of 91. 
let's do some variables. Write each expression as the log of a single expression. Well, 2 times the natural log of x basically becomes the natural log of x squared. 1 half times the natural log of y becomes the natural log of y to the 1 half power. And then 3 times the natural log of z becomes the natural log of z to the third. Now for this one, we've got the natural log of x squared minus the natural log of y to the one-half. Well, that becomes the natural log of x squared over, now y to the one-half is the same as the square root of y. Then we've got minus the natural log of z to the third. That means we're going to, to divide by z to the third. So I'm just going to go ahead and include that in the denominator. So our answer, our simplified form would be the natural log of x squared divided by square root of y z to the one-third. And then one more, the log of x base 3 times 5, remember the 5 out front becomes the power, so that's the log of x base 3 to the fifth plus the log base 3 of 2x minus the log base 3 of y. We're going from left to right. We are adding logs, which means we're going to find the product. So that's the log base 3 of x to the fifth times 2x. The minus log means we're going to, to divide by y, so we would get the log base 3 now, x to the fifth times 2x would be 2x to the sixth divided by y. So I'm just going to put over y. So our answer would be the log of 2x to the sixth over y with a base 3. Objective 2 is the change of base formula. We mentioned that in the last topic, but we're going to do a little bit more with that this time. What it says is let x and a not equal to 1, and b not equal to 1, be positive real numbers, then the log of x base a is equal to the log of x with any base divided by the log of a with the same base, which basically means if they give us a base that is not 10 or e, then we're going to have to use this formula to use our calculator to find the log. So let's do some examples. Find the log using the change of base formula. Round to the nearest thousandth as needed. Well, the log of 20 base 4, what that really means is 4 to what power is 20? Notice it's not a nice, neat power, so we're going to have to use our calculator. So what we're going to say is the log of 20 divided by the log of 4. Okay, now notice our last examples, we did properties of logs. That did not apply to if we were dividing logs. Okay, that was if we were subtracting logs, then we could write them as division. So for this one, we're going to do the log of 20 divided by the log of 4. So we've got the log of 20, make sure you close the parenthesis, divided by the log of 4 and that would give us 2.16096 rounded to the nearest thousandth would be 2.161. The next example, the log of 6 base 2 divided by the log of 5 base 2. Well, that means the log of 6 divided by the log of 2 divided by the log of 5 divided by the log of 2. Well, remember to divide by a fraction, we're going to invert and multiply, so that would be the log of 2 divided by the log of 5. Those will divide out, so what we get is the log of 6 divided by the log of 5. So on our calculator, we're going to do the log of 6 divided by the log of 5, which would give us approximately 
1.113. Now we could have just started out and done it all on our calculator with no algebra. So what we would do is we would put the numerator in parentheses. That would be the log of 6 divided by the log of the base, which would be log of 2. That closes the top. Divided by, then the second fraction would be the log of 5. Close that. Divided by the log of 2. Close the second fraction, which notice that gives us the same thing. There's just a lot of parentheses that we have to deal with. Next example. Find the log using the change of base formula. Round to the nearest thousandth as needed. Well, we could find two separate logs, which would be the log of 13 divided by the log of 5, because your change of base is you find the log of the big number divided by the log of the base, plus then the second fraction would be the log of 9 divided by the log of 5. Close that parenthesis which gives us about 2.958, or we could have used our properties that says to add two logs, you multiply, so that would be 13 times 9. Well, 13 times 9 would be 117, so now we could have just said the log of 117 divided by the log of the base, which again gives us about 2.959 when we round it to the nearest thousandth. There are several different ways you can do these, but using the properties will often make it a little easier. Okay, you are now ready to do the homework for topic 10.2 in my math lab. If you have any questions, let us know.